Hello everyone. Oh, this isn't going to work. That's not going to work. Having that in the way, or maybe it doesn't matter when I zoom in. How's everyone doing today? <laughs> Great way to start the stream. Second guessing myself. Sounds about right. All right. It is September 9th, Thursday, September 9th, 2022. Welcome and thank you for being here with me or not being with, here with me and watching this later. And thank you just for hanging out. We're gonna have some fun tonight. I have some ideas of what we can work on. We're gonna do some data science, live coding, fun, chilling, community building, whatever you wanna call it. It's gonna be great. So I hope you join us tonight um, for this. Now, before I get into anything, let's go ahead, let's go ahead and check to make sure the chat is working. I have Niz, on YouTube saying awesome. That means we got one person here. Nice, like it. Can you hear me? Audio level's okay. I'm using specific music that says it's copyright free because I always get my YouTube videos marked as copyright infringement, even though I use music that says it's copyright free, but this time I'm extra, extra careful. Big fan of me, Niz. Thank you. Uh, what videos have you seen of mine? By the way, if you come on over to Twitch, Twitch, um, that's where the chat will appear on the screen. Everything's perfect, okay, great. I'm gonna put that link here and I'm gonna mute myself over here and let's get into it. So first things first, everyone. We are gonna have a great, great night. I can feel it already. I can feel it already, and let's start this night out by talking about none other than the competition which we are, we've been hosting. Of course, I'm gonna be messing with everything on screen while I do this, but here we go. We're gonna talk about the cop competition, the corn competition. We're talking about um, Pog Champs number three. It's corn classification, people. Let's do it. That's a weird song. Okay, so maybe this music idea was not a good idea. Mm. There we go. Um, so it's corn classification competition all up in your face. If you don't know about this, you don't know what's what. We have four days to go, people. 80 teams. That's impressive. How many did we have on, on the last one? Juana, Juana Stan. Juana Stan? Am I saying that name right? Welcome. Thanks for catching me live. Is this your first time? I love it. Welcome. So we're going to, we have a lot in store tonight that we should get into. Before we get into that, let's talk about the corn classification competition. So we got corn here. Um, I'm sorry, this music just is not doing it for me. I don't know if people are, are hearing this. Let's try this. Okay, so we have this corn competition. Leaderboard is going with 80 people. We had some bozo out there cheat in this competition. Don't worry, we're gonna remove any of the cheaters. They're not gonna make it past the very beginning but here, but um, Officially, officially, Sanskar is on the top of the public leaderboard. Uh, we won't know exactly what the private leaderboard holds until it happens. We've had some discussions, lots of discussions. I had a post that I made about the cheating. And the summary of the post, you can go ahead and read it if you want, if I could ever find it here, regarding cheating. The summary of this is just, why would you cheat on the competition like this? It's to learn. Yes, you can go searching, spend all your time trying to find, oh, it's Swan's John Sebastian. Um, so yeah, you can spend all your time trying to figure out how to match up all the images and you're just gonna get yourself removed from the leaderboard. You're gonna ruin your name. I'm not gonna like you. <laughs> it's not gonna be cool. Or you can focus on trying to actually solve this problem and we can all learn together and actually grow. That's the whole point. So don't cheat. That's my summary of that. Um, 
Any other questions, let me know. Can you briefly discuss the merits of running locally in a Jupyter notebook versus running in Kaggle? So locally, you basically um, don't have to deal with the fact that you're, all your interaction with your notebook and your data is through the cloud. So then you're subject to limitations with resources. Like the instance that Kaggle has isn't that huge. So if you want to run CPU intense or you want to run on multiple GPUs, like on my machine, you can't really do that on a Kaggle notebook. Also is just a little bit more robust. You can not be limited to the 30 hours of GPU time that they do on Kaggle. Although that's a lot of time. I mean, let's be honest. Are you spending all that time on your GPU? Maybe for training a model. Um, but if you're just like editing something using a notebook, yeah. So the positives of using a Kaggle notebook is that it's almost like, you, if you make it public, it's almost like anyone can see it. Send them the link, you know they can run the co code from top to bottom, that's the pluses of it. So different strokes for different folks. I'm gonna be working tonight on something that is going to be mostly local, working on local. Uh, any other questions? Let me know if you have them. Hey guys, it is Thursday night. We're almost at the weekend. So let's, let's get excited. What we're going to, so that's it. I think for this competition, uh, again, just to remind everyone, I'm going to put this into chat, but you can win this RTX 3080 Ti, um, sign up for NVIDIA's GTC conference, which has already ended, but you can still go and watch a lot of the awesome uh conference material that they have there and you can um then yeah be eligible for this gpu so all you have to do is uh register take a screenshot of yourself attending one of the sessions it can be after the fact subscribe to me on youtube and follow me on twitch and be a totally awesome person so that's all it takes i will ship this gpu anywhere in the world up to a hundred dollars and yeah, this will be yours. It's sitting right up there. Do you see it right there? I would open it. Last time I got my greasy hands all over it every time and it, it lets smudges all over it. So I'm not gonna do that this time. And uh, yeah, you should just, just try to win it. It's not that hard. So my idea for tonight is that we are going to talk about something that is near and dear to my heart which is um, the chess drama going on in the world. So there are a lot of things going on in the chess world. Just to bring you up to the speed, if you don't know about this, there's been some allegations of cheating in the chess world. So uh, Magnus Carlsen, who is the best chess player probably of all time, currently the best chess player, resigned from a match because of accusations of someone cheating. Since there, hey, Rhyme Snow, welcome to the family and glad to have you here. So since then, there has been a lot of, I think it's, well, a lot of speculation at first and a lot of, of, of uh, finger pointing about who was cheating, who wasn't cheating. I think uh, Hans Niemann has admitted to cheating online but says he has never cheated over the board. Recently, Magnus Carlsen released a statement accusing Hans Niemann of cheating and also saying that he was being suspicious in their game in St. Louis. Now that's just the start of it. There's so much YouTube content out there about um, uh, of different people who are much better at chess than me talking about it. But the thing that caught my eye recently, um, and I'm gonna bring this up. It was a video that came out and it was based around this Google Doc. And you know it's serious when the Google Doc data starts coming out because then people are really doing their homework, right? Um, but the Google Doc has a bunch of Hans Niemann's games and I guess this this metric, which we're gonna learn more about, um, 
which is supposed to be the correlation of this person's of of his play against the computer or against an engine. Let's find this. Okay, so I don't know if you can hear this. Definitely can't see it. So this YouTube video came out. And excuse me if I'm saying her name wrong, but Yosha uh, released this video about the cheating scandal and pointing to this um, spreadsheet. So the idea is that um, the spreadsheet is showing from this popular software called Chessbase, I think, uh, the, what is it showing? It's showing the engine game correlation. You can't hear it? Um, yeah, I, I don't think we need to hear everything. I'll put the closed captions on. So basically what she's saying is that this, this um, percentage tells you how much correlated the player's moves are with the chess engine. And the claim is that having a really high percentage is almost a sure sign of cheating. That's the claim. I'm not saying that's true. That's the claim, right? Um, saying that Magnus Carlsen at his best is at 70%, Kasparov at his best is 69%, and Bobby Fischer during this 20 consecutive winning streak was 72. So if this is true, if these percentages are true, hey, Aksha, welcome to the chat. Chat. Um, maybe I should turn this volume up. Let's mute this. Pause this. And turn this up a little bit because we're I want to show some other stuff with audio. Tell me if you can hear it. Engines. 72% is Bobby Fischer at his peak during his uh, 20 consecutive winning strike. Like again, time enough. You thought we were going to uh, continue the Novozymes con competition? 70% is Maybe next Carson time. At his best, I'm going to take a little break because I, I get excited about other stuff. So I apologize 67 if I'm jumping around too much. but. So very normal game. so that's the claim that these percentages that's are cool. showing clearly um, if the person doing is doing exactly best, like the engine in, says um, uh, and game with a small advantage so two bishops uh, enters this and especially game. i think in end games and i'm not the chess expert here um to edge six what people say I is, it's is that there's so many little decisions that you could no, make that it's really hard to calculate exactly what the best moves are. For black because after knight g3, g3, rook g3, the knight on h2 is so, lost. Correlation with uh, according so to the big th what what this comes down to but, is um, this spreadsheet shows results, there's a lot of a hundred percent publicly available on his uh, website. All right, so let's go back to this part. Wigan's results uh, were publicly available on his uh, website. So, and of course, I put the link in the description. So what matters is the ROI, uh, which for um, Neiman between 2019 and 2022, it's between uh, 62.3 and 36.6. As uh, Regan explained in his uh, chess-based interview, 50% of the uh, of Hans results are above 50, and 50% are under 50, which is exactly okay. uh, what you would expect because this ROI follows a normal distribution. Okay, so now we got statistics coming in here. We have the normal distribution of of what you should, what how well. Hans should, I think this is the point she's making, is that if Hans Niemann is a certain accuracy or a certain sort of match with the chess engines, then the odds of him having these really high so here we are scores on, uh, should be low. Uh, it's a normal distribution centered on zero with plus one sigma, plus two sigmas, uh, minus one sigma, minus two sigmas. And for... Um, Regan's ROI, it's 
not zero, it's 50. And it's not plus one sigma, it's a 55. It's 60, 65, 70, 45, okay. um, 40, 35, 30. And according to Reagan's, um, according to Reagan, Hans results are just normal. Like, as you can see, there are three tournaments above 60, which is more or less what you would expect, like two or three tournaments like Okay, this. I think I think what she's talking about is the fact that um, according to this other chess cheating expert, uh, um, his, Hans Niemann's res results are just close to in normal distribution. There's nothing odd above, about them. Uh, 60, and also one tournament uh, above 40, but two tournaments at uh, precisely 42.2, so normal results according to Reagan. But if we take a look at the ROI according to Reagan for these uh, five tournaments and even the sixth one because it's also above uh, 50. So this is uh, the comparison of the ROI for these tournaments because for the Philadelphia it's uh, 57.9. Um, a lot of numbers being thrown around ROI, here. Which uh, correspond to an odds of 1 in uh, 18. So it's not, of course, it's not um, probability of cheating. It's uh, uh, the opposite, actually. If you consider a population of uh, players who are non-cheaters, in one in every 18 tournament, you will see such a tournament has a hands had in uh, Philadelphia. So you see it's not at all a proof of cheating or an indication of cheating. It's um, the, um, the probability so of uh, it happening uh, in case uh, Hans doesn't cheat. So one in 18 is just, it happens. But the f uh, second tournament in a row is one in seven. Okay, so what, what she's saying is that the, f the odds of him having this ROI in this, I guess, cherry picked. See, this is the problem. It's a, it, it's picking just the tournaments where he had these really good results, I think. And the third one, one in eight and one in six. So as you can see, because you have to multiply the probabilities, uh, it's getting stranger and stranger. The cumulative probabilities are uh, less than 1% after two, two tournaments in a row. Uh, one in um, 1,000 after three tournaments in a row and uh, after this six uh, tournaments in a row. So are these the, I don't think these are the ROIs that are seen. I think those are just the ROIs of the tournaments it's that are shown to have these 70, high percentages. Um, 77,000. So very strange so with the math done this way the the proof is that it's like almost impossible that this would happen by Thing. chance so you might be wondering what is I the probability uh, that hans has cheated uh, knowing this well we don't know it's all and if you saw so, uh, evidence all right so that's enough of that now i want to jump over to this other video that came out and this is um, Daniel Wrench, who I'm a big fan of just as, <laughs> uh, uh, as a person. He was streaming back in the day an on Twitch, part. and I really uh, liked his content. So, right um, but he's like, like the, 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 the head guy the on, at chess.com. And here he's talking about how they use their algorithms to identify cheaters on their website and i think it's really interesting and this kind of get into the, what we're going to code up tonight so, so let's say this out. in giving some different interviews and talking about it one of the things i think people are often surprised to hear about when it comes to statistics about how we're able to kind of aggregate someone's dna as far as who they are mm -hmm. and we i gave some comments about this when the houston astro scandal was happening and i won't say to who but it was it was people who were dealing with different things about it and one of the things we pointed out here carl you'll love this is so he's talking about the houston astros who had been uh caught cheating in baseball one of the things people take for granted when baseball. you're measuring someone's ability to achieve greatness is that if they're receiving inside information 
when you look at someone's DNA about how often they receive, uh, sorry, not how, forget about receiving, how often they play the best move. Mm -hmm. Okay. No matter what, overall. We're going to, we're going to code this up, by the way. He's talking about, I like the way he's explaining it because it's a lot simpler. And I think he reveals some inside information about how chess.com codes up there um, or how they had identified cheating, right? Lifetime or what they data, believe to be cheating. There will be the times they play the best move, but there will also be times they miss where they swing and miss, right? right. Or they throw a dart and miss, or you tried to play the best move, but you blunder, right? And oh So what this is saying to me, what, what I'm reading through the lines is he's saying, if you're never missing, if you're always getting a lifetime of data, you can very good, uh, very good moves without fail. That's an indicator of cheating. someone's DNA, who they are as a chess player, the amount of times they play the best move and the amount of times they don't play the best move. One of the things that we do that a lot of people I think know about that is a little more innovative, more than just like advanced T1, T2 analysis or comparing yourself to Stockfish is like, we're looking at, you know, we're looking at ways to sort of measure. Let's, uh, let's make sure we understand what he's saying here because I'm, we're gonna bring up some games and try to compare them in, in aggregate for a bunch of players and compare them against Stockfish. So he's saying it's more than just comparing it to People Stockfish, in, right? In a, how can I, I'm, I'm almost, I almost walked into a big data thing there, I can't say because it's our algorithm, but I'll say this, that we are- Yes, reveal um, your algorithm. I can say this, that like one of the most fundamental mistakes people make is forgetting that where chess engines have evolved, just comparing to the top engine mm -hmm. is no longer a useful way to look at it because every engine is so much better than humans that the aggregate way looking at T1, T2, T3 of any one engine so I think he's saying that if you're looking at the top one, top two, or top three moves of the engine, he's saying that's engine not enough. Is like moving the goalpost and wondering why, like I kicked it through the middle and the goalpost wasn't there. To use a football analogy, it was moved to the left corner or the front of the end zone or here, right? right. So one of the innovative things that we've done as far as how we can aggregate what we do is like- I don't like, get that analogy. If you look it. at things from an evaluation perspective versus the top move perspective, there's always a top move, but there are moves that fit within the top group of moves. All right, so he's saying, look at it from an evaluation because perspective. This allows you to, in a more broad sense, catch sophisticated cheating because people are matching up with a move that stays within the top eval, let's say zero to 0 0.24 before you get 0 0.25. And you don't have to necessarily be playing the top move to be playing the best move. And then there's how many times people play the... You don't have to play the top move to play the best move. So call it evaluation one, E1 versus E2 versus E3. And within those brackets, there are multiple moves that could be E1, E2, E3. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm actually sharing more than I should, but I don't care. I'm not gonna stop because it's fascinating stuff and people love okay. it. Okay. So, so the point is you have a bucket and when you look at someone's ability to play the best moves within a bucket and we're already doing it better. It's a little you. weird because there's Thursday night football being played in the background and it's not tonight's Thursday night football. It's a it's different Thursday moves. night football. What you have is you can't play the best moves more often back to the Altuve. We'll go back to Astros. What was tipping, what was tipping about the Astros data and like the opinions that we gave on that statistically, Hikaru, is not yeah. just... just made a huge catch, by the way. Okay. Awesome. I love it. Sorry. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, so keep going. What was interesting is not just someone's ability to turn on a fastball and hit it over left field when they know a fastball is coming. Someone's yeah. ability to execute when they receive inside information at a more at a more efficient level, i.e., receiving like the you know a best chess move. On the one hand, is 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 reflected by playing the best chess move. But if you aggregate that data over time, what's really telling about the Astros scandal was how how often they were no longer swinging at pitches outside the strike zone. Meaning, when you have inside information, huh. you're more likely to swing at balls you know what they are, and you're actually less likely to swing when you don't have the tip, which makes you less likely to swing when a ball is outside the strike zone. What does that mean? Does that mean he's comparing like in tournament games to online games? Because that's not something we can so do. So statistically, or over maybe time, it is. When you aggregate data, you can actually. Granted, like we don't have the data source that that uh, Chess.com has, so we're never going to be able to do this at their look scale. Look at but... it and know that something that is wrong over here as the best move yeah. also makes something wrong over here as the worst move. What it means is they're also playing their worst moves less often. Does this make? They're yeah, playing no. their worst moves less often. What does that what mean? Saying? Yeah, no, no, it makes it makes so a lot of sense. When you look at yeah. someone's.
Yeah, the guys aren't playing classical online. Hey, that's, that's true. That's the Trash fascinating things about magic. it. Because I only brought up because you mentioned the Astros is that right. when someone is doing something wrong, it. it doesn't just reflect in the their ability to do it right. It also, if you're doing statistics properly, reflects in how much they 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 make they make less of not necessarily blunders because people want to see blunders, but they're they're no longer swinging within the strike zone, but missing at the same way they used to, and so that mm -hmm. kind of tells you that something is wrong. Okay, so that means comparing what he I think he's talking about there is when he says a uh, chess player's DNA, like getting a chess player's DNA means that you're um hey, we got a follower. Thank you for following. I, I'm sorry if that hurts everyone's ears because I I think I have the volume. Welcome to the family, Matt. Um did that break everyone's ears? All right, YouTube uh, and we got another follower. Welcome to the family, Stone Cold, 1989. Stone Cold. Is that Steve Austin there? Steve Austin just joined the chat. Let's get some music on. Ooh, that's loud for me. Um, hopefully the volume's all right. So we're gonna start coding up here and keeping in mind what we learned. Okay, so the number one thing is we have some suspect, um, we have some suspect games that we can look into excuse me we also have uh, chess engines at our disposal and we can check what this spreadsheet is doing is it's basically taking each game and trying to boil it down to a single value to rate that game which i think is oversimplified uh, what i think daniel wrench was talking about is probably a little bit too sophisticated for what we can do here. But we can at least go into these and maybe see what's going on. Because when I was looking at this on my own, I wasn't necessarily seeing a 100% correlation. And uh, maybe that's spoiler alert, but we should talk about that. All right, what's chat saying? So would you have multiple engines engines playing at different levels and each player is encoded based on which how similar they are to which engine that could be it yeah yeah you basically are trying to model the players but see in order to do that you have to assume that they're not cheating like you have data on them where they're not cheating engine similarity is a separate issue from just playing the top moves of course Engines make moves that humans can't get because they are unintuitive, but the computer can just calculate 20 leaves deep. Correct. Can you share your machine's specs, please? Um, system profiler. Here's my computer specs. Does that give you everything? Yes, I do have, it's two of these 1080 TIs also. Eight cores, 64 threads, and we're gonna use those here. So, um, so yeah, let's look at some of these games because basically what we're being told is that these hundreds are like Bobby Fish, are like beyond what anyone could ever get. That's what the first video we watched claim that these hundreds are like almost super unlikely. Now, the other thing that Hikaru mentioned when he was watching that video was that these could be really low move games. Like if they're only, if they end after a handful of moves, then maybe it's more possible to have a hundred percent. But I've started to think this through and I want to get everyone's opinion on it as we're working on it. So first things first. Um, I wrote this code, which basically pulls from this website, PGN Mentor. PGNs are the file format of that hold all the data information about the games. And I wrote this script that goes through here and they have this for um, some of the top pl players. So if we go to like Carlson, obviously, we can go to view the PGN games. Oh, that's gonna actually view it here. 
You can look at this PGN file. Oh, this is gonna open it in our my open open with. Let's open it in Sublime Text. And it looks like this, right? We have the all of his games going back. This looks like until 2001. Hey, Data Basics, thanks for subscribing. Thank you so much. All the way up to a Crypto Cup, which was online. All right, so I got to spin the wheel, right? Isn't that the rule for, for getting getting a subscription. Thank you so much, Data Basics. What led you to want to subscribe? Or are you just renewing it? Let's spin this wheel for you. Please land on something fun. 10 push-ups. All right, let's go. Ten push-ups done and done. Thanks, Data Basics. Let me know uh, what you're up to. The underlying data is suspect. The people look at the games. The more engines are compared against the top mood, thus the higher correlation score goes up. Yeah, so the claim in that first video was that these hundreds are, like, impossible. Um... I wish I could find that. Let's let's find that video again. And like this is like this is a popular video too. It has 366,000 views. So Where was it? The the like word document. Hey, Fodista, welcome to the stream. Thank you for hanging out. Here. This part. Um So this is saying that normal players, normal super GMs which Hans Niemann should be in is 62 to 67%. So then they're pointing to this, which has 100. But if you average across all these games, what is it? Maybe 62%, maybe 70%. Oh, wait, it has it here, 70%. So it's a little bit more reasonable. Hans isn't super GM. He's, he's under 2,700. Didn't he just hit 2,700? He's on the border. Let's just say he's on the border. Let's give him the benefit of the doubt. All right, so I ran this code, which goes in the PGN Mentor, downloads all these players' um, zip files. So basically, get all the references in this that end with zip. So if I run this first one, it basically created a list of links. These are all the links on this website PGN Mentor, and we only care about the ones that end in .zip. Pull those, and then download them and put them in the zips folder. So now I have a zip file for each of the players. And then I unzip them into a PGN format. Now I can go ahead and use the chess.pgn library in Python to open a game or, or a player's file. And the way this works is you open the PGN file like this, oops, which I probably shouldn't leave always open. And then you use this chess PGN to read the game and it's gonna iterate all over all the games in this. So you can see in the names, it's going up from like the oldest games to the newest 
every time I run the cell because this creates a generator which returns the game. Um, so let's just call this last one a game, right? So now we have a game which is a, a chess object for the game. And then we can create a board of this game which obviously starts with the first position, with the starting position of a game. Oh, Google is a bit out of date. He's less than two points away, so you'll retract. Thanks, Trash Can Magic, for retracting. Not many people do that these days. All right, also in this game, we have... Let's do this. In this game, we have all these moves. Um, so yeah, we'll do the main line because I guess these games could have analysis where they branch off into different moves, but these are all the chess moves from this and this game. And I can iterate over these by doing four move in these main lines. And then we take the board and we push that move on the board. And let's just break after one. Oh yeah, we need to define the board. Now if we look at the board, it has the first move, which is E4. Oh, a DAS? Big fan of those. What's a DAS? I need a new Mac, 60% for work. Tempted to get those third Lepoid. I don't know what you're talking about, but I would like a new Mac too if you want to send one my way. All right, so let's run the next move. Oh, wait, it won't let us. Okay, so we, we have to do, let's run this till the end. Pull the game board, and then this is how this game ended. So we can go through these now and run through each game. Now something else I did, which I've realized I messed up, was I wrote this code now. Now we have all these PGNs. Now the one thing is Chessbase didn't have Neiman's games, but I was able to find them. Someone on Reddit had them. So now in my PGNs folder, I do have Neiman's games as well. It looks like it starts here in 2013. Goes all the way up until some more recent online games. See what the last one is. Boom. Uh, 2022, 9.20, so just a few days ago. This is uh, that rapid tournament. I think the online one where, yeah, the Chess 24 inv internet one where um, Carlson resigned, right? Or can we find that game? Should be able to find it here. Yeah, here. This game. Do you guys know about this game? Oh, yeah, my keyboard is a desk. Yes, I know what you're talking about now. Sorry, I was a little confused. Yeah, so like let's load. So this game is here, the Gen Cup prelim. All right, so I wrote this code that basically went through in all these PGN files. I'm going to show you what it does. And I prefer things to be in a data frame format so I can query them because we're not just like the PGN metadata makes sense for if you're looking at a single game, but we want to look at a bunch of different games. So all this basically does is it loops through a player's PGN file and it converts it into a data frame format. And then I ran it on all of the PGN files that I had. Some of them failed for, I think Kasparov's failed for some reason. Need to look into that. But I saved the ones that I could in Parquet format. That kind of leads us to where we are now. Oh, why is this freezing up? Don't freeze up on me. Don't freeze on me. Computer, see this is maybe why I should be using 
Kaggle notebook for this. Um, close this. So my problem here is I did a strip. I should just do a replace of this startup PGN with, with that. That's probably my issue. I did a, I did a strip and so it removed anything with a PG or N in it from the name. I think that's why Neiman did not have a name. So, okay. So now we have a data frame with all Ivan Chuck. Am I saying that right? is names games uh first game in 1996 going all the way to 2002 i don't know what's going on here why sometimes as a game without the right moves mixed with it this could be an issue let's double check the the raw file just to make sure so 4,500 games that's a lot can Python be useful in blockchain? I've never worked in blockchain, so that's being asked in chat. So I don't, I don't know, maybe. Um, so here, what are we going to do? Illegal moves equal cheat, easy model. <laughs> Illegal moves, yeah. Oh, yeah, if you make illegal moves, that is definitely cheating. All right, so what are we going to do here about this? Let's look up Ivan Chuck's games. Let's go into the chess cheat detection 
into our PGN PNGs. Cause it, and then open in sublime. Von Chuck, so what's going on here? It should be that the metadata is here. This should be the last game from 2022, this last year. Europe E-Chess. It's not there. And then we have, this is the D4, C5, D5, G6. So just like the metadata for this one is missing. I'm not sure why. Let's make sure this other one, E4, E5, F4, EX, F4, BC4. It looks like this is correct. If this is the Europe E chess, I think the INT is for it's on the internet. Uh, let's check and make sure though. This is 2002. Oh, geez. Is everything all messed up in this? Hashtag, are you chessing, hacking a chess game to win? Meme clear bams. No, we're detecting cheaters. Obviously. Obvi. Why does this say 2022? So something in my parsing has, has messed up. We might have to debug that. That could be all, all of tonight is just spent on that. Uh, white ELO 2676, 78. Oh, did I scroll up too many games? No, but it still doesn't make sense because this is, says 2022. Oh, I know what I did. I know what I did. I sorted by dates. So if we look at the date, I made this date column, which is a date clean, uh, is greater than 2021. So let's look at these. These should be the latest games. 720. This is the A43. I don't know what this ECO means. What is ECO? En Encyclopedia of Chess Openings. Okay, so that's the opening. Uh, I should just look at the opponent. So Ivan Chuck was in the white or playing as black and playing as white was Duda. Yeah, that looks right. And let's make sure that the moves are right. C4, E6. They are not. They are not. That's a problem. That's a problem. Where did my code go wrong? C4, E6. Knight C3, D5. All right. Good thing we're figuring this out now. Let's figure out what's going on in this code. Wabisuke999. Welcome to the family. John Christoph Duda. Really strong young Polish player. Cool. All right. So what did I do wrong here? This went through each of the PGN files. It reads the game. It appends this to games. And then it appends this to mainline moves. Oh shoot, I did a I did a very stupid thing. I gone did a dumb thing, man. All right. So one of the things I did absolutely incorrect, which could affect all of my other analysis, was that um, 
I added these mainline moves to this data frame after, yeah, I did this wrong. All right, so I added this mainline moves after I resorted this by the dates. I think I should just not sort do this line. Just let it be in the right order. In the order that it comes in. Sup, Hat Knight? How you doing? I'm from Brazil. Wabisuke, welcome. How are you? I hope you're having a good time. We're just looking at some chess data and realizing all the errors that I made in my code. And we're gonna we're gonna figure it out. So if it ends with INT, the event site name, I think that's an online game. So I'm labeled that, labeling that as online. That may or may not be correct. So what do I need to do here is go into this. Hopefully you guys can see this. Go into this. First, let's remove this Twic directory because that's a uh, game of the week or something that I was gonna do and then I didn't do it. Let's go into games and let's remove everything in there. Bye bye see ya, no longer here. Then let's go into, hey, Bernard, welcome to the family, how are you doing? You're part of our family now, so start doing the dishes, clean your room, let's get into this. So I need to run this script PGN to data frame now, but I want to, I want to subset it just the ones that we care about. So, um, so instead of running all of the PGN files, let's give it a list of ones that we care about to start with. So let's go to PGNs, grep, Carlson. Yeah, so we're going to we're going to get this one. Uh, this is going to be PGNs. We're going to pull in Nakamura. Let's just do some of the, we'll we'll have them all run in the background, but in the me just to start off, I want to run a few of the ones uh, and then obviously Neiman. If I could spell N I E two ends. All right, save this, go up one directory. Nope, stay in this directory. And run our Python on PGN2DF. All right, so what this is doing is first it's pulling all of his games from that file, then it's changing it into a data frame format. Hello, Bernard from Oh, what's that flag? I need to search for this flag. Tell me what that flag is. I love Python crazy fanatic man says, nice, welcome. I need to establish an ETL pipeline to my closest closet to get last week's laundry off my bed. Automate everything data basics. You got the right idea. Especially if you're part of the family. Can you make a tutorial on setting up YOLO V5 for training on Windows. There doesn't seem to be a good tutorial on YouTube. Um, I Yeah, I would, but I don't have a Windows machine, so it would make it kind of hard for me to do that. I do understand that most people are running on Windows, though. Do you have CUDA installed? Because you can follow all the instructions to make sure CUDA is installed first, and then hopefully it'll run fine. e 2 Dazi, Welcome to the fam. Hope you're doing well. That's Dominican Republic Congo. DR combo, Congo, is that what that is? DR Congo. 
Welcome from DR Congo. That's awesome, Bernard. All right, so this is running for Carlson and Nakamura, and then it's going to run for Neiman. So now that that's run for them, let's check to make sure everything looks good in this by reading in one of theirs. All right, so now we have a data frame with Carlson's games. Going up into 2022, we have none with blanks in them. That's good. Um, these are all not online. Although this crypto cut was kind of online. I heard the Neiman guy is pretty good. Yeah, he is. Recently completed a job where I scraped subreddits and gave a client a CSV of the deliverable. It was a lot of fun. That sounds like interesting work. <laughs> who's, your, who's your client? All right, so those ran. Now we're going to delete this and just have it run on all of them. Because it looks like it's good now. It's actually keeping the ends and the names. All right, so we have Carlson. Let's just double check again by doing um, sublime uh, text on Carlson and going all the way to the end. Let's make sure the last game equals what we see in our database in our data frame. Come on. All right, the Crypto Cup, Miami, he won this one, right? Played against Prague, another young, strong player. And we wanna compare this to here, which it has a correct date. Everything looks right, but is the game correct? Is the, are the moves correct? D4, G6, E4, B, G7, Knight F6, Knight F3, D6. This looks like the right game. I think we have things linked up. Upwork is a crazy place. I've never been to Upwork. All right, so let's just start by looking at some of the, one of the sus, check out the sus game. All right, so we're actually gonna do the Neiman's data and then we're gonna flag sus games. The ones they claim to be suspicious. Or let's just run, let's go into this and run it on all of the games from, let's say, a tournament where the hundreds appear. Uh, so this Masters game in 2000. So we should be able to find all of these games in our data frame now by doing um, event contains let's sum this. So there are 27 games that match this event name. Uh, Cause they have it every year. It looks like, and this was the fourth event, fourth Sarja masters. And the one that they're seeing is sus is this, the fourth one, the fourth one. So this game he played in the second round is supposedly the second, the sus one. Uh, let's go here and do PD set option. Display max columns. So we can see all the columns in this. Round two. So I don't know why they don't have the round one game there, but this is supposed to be the sus one. Let's double check and make sure that he won. He was playing at the white pieces. Yeah. I think this is the right day. Um, 
Actor, principal, Dessa, novella, um, got to, what are you talking about? What are you guys talking about in chat? I'm so confused. I'm so confused. So, we will pull that game up. And let's also look at and round equals two. make this a float why not there's probably some missing values now we can at least filter this way and we're gonna go to the 2004 how did he play two games in round number two in the fifth Are these duplicates we do have duplicates here that's messed up uh, let's see duplicated how many of those we have 61 duplicated game rows. We should probably add that to our data pipeline here where we're filtering through these. We should drop duplicates because why would we want identical games? PNF, chess encoding, that's me. Nice. Yeah, you're right. You're in the right spot. So let's do this. Drop this index, make the round something like this. And let's do it was 2021, right? Oh, I need a dot DT dot year. So this should be equal to 2021. Aren't there ones that are this? 382. Oh, I need to wrap this in brackets. Let's also add our good old friend, the black formatter. Load extension, lab black. This will make this look a little prettier to read. All right, so this is our sus game. Now we have our sus game, right? And we have all of our moves, mainline moves. And let's pull this out. So that's our mainline moves from this game. I think this is the one. Hey, Nathan Ryan, welcome to the family. How are you doing? Any DSA tips for you? Starting DSA as a freshman intern. I don't know what DS, what's DSA? Um, so this is all the moves. We are going to load this into, uh, we're going to import the chess.pgn. We're also just going to import chess. And we're going to import IO. Not is. IO. Um, so we need to wrap this in IO in order to read it in. Let me see how I did this before. What's up? Welcome to the family, Milfoy. Just so you know, this could be messed up data, but this is what I was running before. I was basically trying to see like what move rank that uh, Kasparov and all these other players were getting. Like what their average move rank was for games. And then I was also plotting the move rank versus the length of the game. So what this plot is, is for a game, Kasparov had a game that lasted 60 moves and on average chose like between the second and the third best engine move, if I did everything correctly. It also depends on the depth of the engine. Hey, what's up? What project are you working on? Random gar garbage said this. Um, we are just hanging out and we're trying to do some detection of.
Data structures and algorithms. Okay, I just had never heard it like that. Data structures and algorithms are fun. So we are going to go over back to our code. So we have this game, which apparently is 100% accurate. We are going to look at the moves and I'll, I'll go ahead and copy in this code that I wrote. Is it really an outlier, a black swan event? What's the black swan event that we're talking about? I don't see any black swan against events here yet. Okay, so this is what I was doing before. What this code should do is it takes in a game and the color, the pieces that the player that we care about is playing as. Then it loops through the mainline moves. Oh, another thing I need to show you is, there is a stockfish. There's a stockfish Python plugin or library. And what it allows us to do is to basically take, I downloaded Stockfish 15 and compiled it on my computer in this location, but it lets us create this Stockfish object, which then we can run on, um, on our analysis. Now the thing about, let's check this out, Stockfish Python package is that it comes with these default engine strength and all this other stuff. I think we want to set the engine strength to 20, keep all this stuff the same. Hashes. Okay, so we should change the hash to make it more so that we can use more memory. Which stock, Stockfish version was out when that game was played? Probably 15, it doesn't really matter. I, I think it, it, this is non-deterministic. I think that Stockfish would give you different answers. Magnus's bond cloud opening would be an outlier, but doesn't mean that he cheated. True, true, true. That would be in the other direction too. So, um, I kind of want to change this hash to larger. Let's make this. ten twenty. Yeah, this will be, this will be, uh, two gigs of RAM, which actually still isn't even that much. All right, so now we have this stockfish object and what we can do is, um, for move in game that moves, mainline moves, we did this before, remember? We're going to, Oh, we're also going to start with a board, which is this game, that board. We're going to take the board and we're going to push this move. And then we'll break after move 20. All right. So now if we look at our board, this is move number 20 of that game. And white just moved, so it's black to move. Oh, we started at zero, so it's actually move number 21. Let's start this up. Where did we load in this game? Let's reload in this game. Let's move all these imports to the top. Let's move our stockfish imports to the top clean this up a little bit 
clean this out. Create our stop stockfish object again, which probably isn't a good idea. All right, this should get us to move 20. Still a little confused because move stack, the move stack of this game, it's a lot longer than what I, th length of this, 89 moves. Ideally, you find the point where the theory ends depends on opening what number it is. Yeah, I was thinking about that too. There is so chess, the chess software um, does have this polyglot, which I haven't looked at too much, but I guess for grandmasters, the theory ends a little bit later than normal folk or what they've defined as like a lot later in some games. But this lets you read in a binary fi file of known openings. And then I don't know what to do with it from there. I need to figure out what to do with that. But I think this might be a way to figure out if the moves are from the opening. I was doing something like just ignoring the first 10. Hey, what's up about how the protein's going? Elnar said, uh, I haven't looked at them. <laughs> I haven't had time. The theory might end, but the player might still be in book. Yeah, like if there's already a game that's gone that far. What's my chess rating? Pretty bad, pretty bad. I'm like a 1200 on chess.com. Um, I've gotten to 2000 on, on Lee Chess, but that is, Lee Chess is very inflated. I'm pretty horrible. All right, so let's look at this board move. Did it just go? to the end. If we break after this. Yeah, it should just be after the first move. Let's just double check. Yeah, it's going past what? If IDX equals move equals 20. Oh, 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 I'm an idiot. I made, I made move defined twice. All right, so now we have move 20. All right. Still not what, sure why it would have been white's move. So white is going to be move number one. It should be move number 21. Oh, because we increment afterwards. I'm just confusing myself. All right. So we want to actually end. Let's end at move 21. Yeah, this is black's move. Work smart, not hard. My friend is really good at chess. I keep beating him on chess.com because he doesn't know that I'm following AI moves. Data plug, you're, you're Hans Neiman. We found you. No. Um, are you looking for something in particular? No, we're just trying to figure out how to, I'm trying to see if I can show you how we can use Stockfish now to evaluate. So we could take this board position, right? Um, Hans is playing the white pieces. So this would be white to move. And we're going to take this board position. We're going to take that uh, FEN. No, we're going to take the PGN, PNG. Let's see how I did it in here. Stockfish. Set FEN position. Stockfish. Set FEN position as the board FEN. Now Stockfish has the current FEN position. We can do Stockfish 
get top oh let's get parameters just to see what's going on all right no debug file min split slow mover i don't know what this is what's this uci elo hope that's right what is uci elo Anyone know what that is? Let me know. Yeah, so FEN is like the actual board setup. PGN or PNG has every move up until that board position. So we get these parameters. They look okay. I'm just a little thrown off by it. Is this 1350 like the, the strength that it's playing at? No, it's at skill level 20. So I think it's okay. If you turn on the limiter, it'll try to make it like that strength. Oh, so the, the limiter strength is false, so we're good, right? Gotcha. Okay, trash can. Thank you. Uh, everything else look okay? How many threads am I using? 16. On my thread ripper, I want to remember it's this is converting all of our PNGs to data frame format. But let's look at H top. Actually, let's look at B top. See how many CPUs I'm using. Yeah, I think I think we got enough space to run on 16 threads. So stockfish. So get top moves. Stockfish is crass. This was happening to me before because I was doing all this weird stuff where I'm like loading in this data, creating a stockfish object, doing other stuff, and then it crashes. So start from the beginning. We have our board position. We're setting the position. Now we're getting the top moves.
stockfish 15. Then I wrote this code that evaluates the games. So basically it goes through, if we care about the player being uh, like the player playing as white pieces, we say playing as white. If we care about it, player playing black, black pieces, we say black. Then this looks for the board turn if it's their turn and it appends basically all these lists that adds a few things about the game. And let's see if this works. If it works here, then I know it's something about how I set up in the other one. <laughs> Stockfish crashing so much explains Han's normal games. What's normal? For the record, I don't think that he necessarily cheated. All right, so this is running, which is good. Whoa, that's a lot of moves. Oh, that's right. Okay, so here's the deal. I made this change so it, re it returns a bunch of different stuff. So it does take a while to run. So it's running through each of the moves. This is what it should be doing. Running through each of the moves, getting the top 10 moves recommended by Stockfish, and then getting the centipon difference of that move. And now I was comparing these. So centipon um, is like a mathematical way of representing 100th of value of the pawn. So it basically says the engine believes a centipon loss of lower, I think is better. Let's just run this and see what it gives us. Games core. Oh, this should be the core. Lower represents a lower loss from the best move. So shouldn't the lowest one be zero? I'm always seeing the lowest one being more than zero. So we'll look at this after this runs. All right. So basically, Caruana in this game supposedly had... This is a correlation between which move they chose and the sent upon law of the best move by the engine. All right, so basically let's look at this. These are supposedly all the top moves for each of the moves in the game. The first moves don't matter. So let's look at like the 10th, his, his 10th move. It's saying the best sent upon is negative three with the move of E1, G1. The player moves, played moves, the 10th played move was E1, G1. So in this move, he picked the exact correct, or the, the top engine move. He's a cheater. Caruana is a cheater. It's proven here because he did one top engine move. Just kidding. Um, so then the 10th center pawn, center pawn value was negative three. And when I play this move, it says it's negative five. I think this is just some of the variation in the way the engine runs. But what I wanted to do basically was get the uh, evaluation after the move was made and if that evaluation is very close to whatever the top engine move was that's like the error so now we have like a regression to, or we have like a numeric value that defines how close the player was to the best move it's a loss function, okay. Lower represents a lower loss from the best move. 
Stockfish reevaluates constantly. When you, you move forward, it gets another leaf. It can calculate. Got it. I think. All right. So his played move was EG1. And let's actually, let's find one where it's different. Play move 11. All right. So... Oh, wait, hold on a second. Does that mean, what you're saying, does that mean that in this case, C to E2, C3, E2 is the best move? Let's go, let's go into this game. Let's actually create this game. PGN. And load it into something like chess.com. Just to double check. Just to double check. Um, analysis. Paste PGN. Let's put this in, load it. There we go, okay. So start from the beginning. What did this game on move 11 look like? So we're saying on move 11, he picked the third best move, but I don't know if, if this sent upon the zero, it is C3, E2 the best. Plus white is winning, minus black is winning. Okay, that makes sense. So as white, he should want to play this top move. Good. So it is in the order. That's good. So let's move to move 11. Uh, and we're indexed at zero. So there's actually move uh, 12. So at this point, it's saying the best move is The best move is bishop takes c4. Oh, oh no, b takes c4, so this move. But yeah, b takes c4, that's b3, c4. So that's, that's what this is saying is the top move. His move was actually f1 to e1, so he moved here. I would also suggest using Lee Chess's analysis. 20 is a lot shallower than what these guys use for prep. That's probably true in the opening, but I think on move. So you're saying that the depth of 20 isn't enough. At move 12, the depth of 20 isn't enough. Well, clearly he prepped for something different. But let's look at this. Let's look at this and it seems to be making at least some sense, right? What we're getting back. And now we could take this game now that we have these and we can actually make like for this Caruana games game, the specific one. Um, oh, the other thing is want to look here and see what it said. The sent upon differences. So. So move 11 was 36 and played was 30. Is that why? So 30 should be a 0.3. Is that right? Hey, sympathy. What's up? How are you doing? We're just... We're just trying to do some internet sleuthing and figure out where, um, what cheaters are doing on, on, in the chess world. What do you think about? I'm not machine learning my chess games. We are figuring out if people are cheaters, sympathy, cheater, cheater detection. Yeah. We are like the next, you love chess. Do you want to play a game? 
I am not very good at chess, but I like it. <laughs> Muhammad saying some stuff in the YouTube chat about inappropriate things. All right, so what do we got going on here, Sympathy? How's your night? I haven't seen you online in a while. I'm coding something right now, but maybe in a bit. Okay, cool. I am coding stuff, something right now, too. <laughs> um, all right, so I lost my train of thought. So the, the engine move versus what he played, this is my way of seeing, like, did, did the player play better or worse than the, or did play worse than the best engine recommended move? So let's make a data frame with this. Let's rename these columns. So the first one is going to be the engine move. And the second one's going to be the played move. Right? And then we're let's just uh, plot this. Hey, Mason. Welcome to the family. Hope you're doing well. Thanks for hanging out with us. Um, let's make the style... Style like this. Okay, so does this mean, hey Mason, how's it going? Welcome. What did you say, trash can magic? What's the difference between those two moves in terms of eval? Which two moves? I'm so, so far, far away from under when you wrote that, that I don't know which two moves we're talking about. Look at this spike at at 40 move number 40 apparently there's like a really big move that could be made let's jump to 40. what i'm trying to see here is like i i basically just ran the correlation like the pyramid correlation between these two right i can do like core uh let's transpose this and then do correlation and The correlation between the engine moves in terms of the cent upon difference and the moves that he made is 94. That's pretty highly correlated. But let's see this one that where it's like kind of different. We can look at 28, looks like, or 40. Let's check out 40, move number 40. So move number 40. Okay, so basically... For him, there's one good move. There's one good move, and that's to take this pawn. Rook takes a3, right? He played not the best move. He played... He did take that. Oh, he took... What is this plus nine nine nine? Let's see what the moves were. Top moves of 40, which actually should be, oh, that's why it's all, it's all the zero starting counting from zero sort of thing. That's throwing me off. I think, I think. Uh, the one is 39, 40, top moves, played moves, 40, F4, F5, that's a big difference than what the top engine move was. This difference doesn't look that big though. So he played F4, F5, and top move was A3, A8. So apparently here, yeah, the best move was this. And instead, he played this, F5. 
But is F5 up here? No, it isn't. So it's a plus one, five, six. After making this move, the valuation bar goes way down to from 1.5 to 0.9. So these are the sort of things where it's proving that it's not correlated. Although I'm a little confused as to why we're now saying that this move has an evaluation. It's saying after this evaluation of this move that the um, played CPS 40 was 313. That doesn't make sense. So there's something wrong in my code. I think it's when I go through this, loop through it, and I get this evaluation. I think that's the problem. I think I need to increase the depth. Depth right now is 12. Let's make it 20. And let's rerun this bad boy. I'm not sure if I'm doing this right though, because like, okay. So when you get to a move and you run stockfish, get top moves and get the top 10 moves, it gives this cent upon value for each move. But then what I do here is I push the move that they actually made because I don't know if it's necessarily in this top 10. And then I run this get evaluation, which should in theory then evaluate the position and say the new sent upon value. See, this is a lot slower when I increase. Look at these threads just running. Stockfish is going crazy on my machine right now. I see what you're saying. Trash game magic, you're saying that's smart. So you're saying that with such a low depth. So let basically let me change this depth. Whoa, 18 is even their lowest. So basically it's gonna take forever to run all these games. I'll run them overnight, it's cool. It's cool. But yeah, it really, it really does make things a lot slower when I change its depth to be so high, but maybe that's my problem. Especially for end games, maybe. Is it still running? Most end games are table based. Sorry for the delay here, but it does take a while to run this with the um, depth of 20. This makes sense though, right? Like I'm trying to get, I, I'm assuming this is similar. Um, this is similar to the, what's this? This engine correlation. I'm assuming this is similar and we're running for just a random Caruana game and the correlation is like nine, four. So there must be something more to it than just that. But this also gets at what the video we were watching earlier about, um, what they're talking about with like getting a player's profile. When he says T1, T2 analysis, does he mean like the top one, top two moves? So I think what he's getting at is similar to what we're doing here. 
they're looking at the difference the difference between the pawn loss of the moves the player makes versus what they on average a normal player would do correlation to the top move is interesting but again i think more relevant is judging how likely it is that a human would find the move which is tough agreed but i think to go back to the simple argument which is if people are making the argument that just on a whole this game was a hundred and that's proof of cheating first of all that would be really stupid to like just play games 100 percent perfect and also i don't think it's true from when i was looking at the the results earlier like it wasn't always making the top chat engine move but even if he was we need to run that analysis on a bunch of different players and see if that's even out of the ordinary because it might be in a whole bunch of games that it's possible for that to happen this is taking forever well this whole assertion is ridiculous feedies Feedy's uh, best anti-cheat person says the last two years had basically no evidence that he cheated over the board. I, I kind of agree. It doesn't look like there's anything to point to over the board stuff. And that's what got me going down this route is like, why are people digging this up? Why is um, Hikaru talking about this on his stream and showing this to me like, wow, that's crazy. This is crazy evidence when really who knows what these numbers actually represent the engine correlation and who knows if these are actually um, that crazy to see. I mean, if you believe uh, this video, which we were watching earlier over 98% is like um, crazy. It's like better than Bobby Fisher during his 20 consecutive winning streak. So you know how surgeons think they know everything about everything? Chess players do the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, Sometimes when you're an expert in something. depth back of 12 so this can actually end in the time where we're running um uh or let's do a depth of 15 that's a great point great debugging so if uh, stockfish now i need to make after i push this move i need to do stockfish set fen position again right Really, I should make the oldest code not repeated. Um, but I'm just copying and pasting here. That was a great point, though. I didn't actually evaluate it after the push was made. All right, let's see how this runs. Let's also do this. This, this also will make my my nerves calmed if I have a TQDM from TQDM import uh, notebook import TQDM bro stockfish exception All right, so now it's at least going through the moves. We can see a little bit of a progress at the bottom. And Hans does have a history of cheating, so he does. So does his team. So frankly, if it happened, I guess it would be assumed that it would be you said st stolen prep. 
Yeah, I don't get the stolen prep theory because how would how would that get out? I doesn't Carlson have a very tight close group that help him out. I don't think they're leaking his opening stuff, but maybe. Um, from when did I start coding? Someone's asking in the chat. What did sympathy say also up here? There's some fun stuff. So anti-cheat people think he is not cheating then? That's correct. Uh, you're on the right track here. You need to understand the correlation numbers and run it across tons of GMs. Yeah. As you can see, it's really slow when you run a large depth. So I would like to figure out how to make this like figure out if it's a known opening and then we can basically just skip all the beginning. We could probably just skip all the 10 first 10 moves because these super GMs have prepped past 10 moves. I would assume uh, the real cheating is going to be in like the middle game and the end game. I think I'm, I don't know. I'm an idiot, but all right. Finally, this is done. Whoa. So now the correlation is much lower. Maybe this is exactly the correlation thing that we're seeing. I'm a little confused now. Did I offset things wrong? Did the fact that we updated it make the offset wrong? Because why, how did he choose something that's better than the engine move? Is that possible? Maybe because of the depth that we're running at? Ada Rose has a really slow method of the loop. Yeah, I, I made a whole video. Check out exclamation point YouTube. Check out my YouTube video on, on why Ada Rose is so bad. In this case, I'm letting it go because the thing that's taking a long time isn't the fact that we're iterating over rows in a data frame. In fact, we're not even iterating over more than one here. The thing that's taking a long time is that we're running stockfish to like calculate the, the chest position. Uh, Sympathy said, what else would he use other than iter rows? Yeah, again, check out my YouTube video on it. I would use a uh, vectorized stuff if you can. Uh, if, and then we were talking about the Hans cheating. How did, how do you even cheat in chess? New, I'm noob about it. Uh, that's the speculation. No one really knows. Um, using engine while playing is cheating. Yeah. So cheating while you're playing online is like pretty obvious. You just use an engine, but these guys cl making claims that over the board chess cheating like this spreadsheet is all over the board classical games from 2019 to 2022. And they're pointing to these 100% correlations as being the issue. Um, so there would have to be someone like signaling, there would have to be some sort of device, people make speculations of how that would happen. I think cheating is a huge threat to chess, especially because computers do it better than people now. Yeah, they've been doing better than computers for a while. And cheaters gonna cheat, right? Um, trash game magic saying Hans was prepared for the line, but no one but Magnus would ever play. Yeah. But then he said that his response to that was like transposition, right? He had studied another line that ended up in the position that he had evaluated. So I don't know people are saying it's sus. So yeah, back to this YouTube, just to self promote here, check out my YouTube channel. If you're, you could be watching this on YouTube right now. Um, but I do have a video on how to speed up your slow pandas code. Speed up your slow pandas code by 25,000. Not using iter rows is the main reason, way that you can do that. Uh, ETSW says, good evening. How's it going, ETSW? I read somewhere that someone mentioned cheating using Morse code vibration. How true is that? Could be true. Yeah, the thing don't even need Morse code. This guy on YouTube showed um, a chess cheating device that he made. That basically just buzzes. 
buzzes like once for it'll buzz once for a pawn, two for a rook or whatever, and then it'll buzz for the square the number of times that it needs. It doesn't it's not even Morse code. You could also use something like pandas instead of prefer something like polars or desk. Trash can magic. You're just like bringing up all of my YouTube videos. Check out. I didn't review polars, but check out this pandas alternatives video where I actually show why Dask and Ray and Modin from what I've, from my experience is not as good as pandas if the data can fit in memory. If the data can fit into your computer's memory, which is like most of the time from medium sized data to small data, and we're, we have super small data here. This game's data frame um, what, what do I call it? DF mem memory usage. Super tiny data here. This is like minuscule. Um, there's no real reason to use other stuff. Although I have heard polars. Everyone commented on this video and said that polars is a uh, potential altern alternative. Where did they put the comments, by the way? They keep on hiding the comments. Yeah, see, I wonder how polars performs. I need to check out polars. But don't always jump to those alternatives. Someone on YouTube saying, historically, people have cheated in offline games by hiding phones. Yeah, I mean, there's that case where the guy, Grandmaster, was found out to be cheating while on the toilet. Let's, let's pull this one up. First of all, super weird to film someone while they are on the toilet, but whatever. I guess it's okay in this situation. I guess we give that a pass, but he went to the bathroom during a game and he's clearly using a phone. That is one way you can catch people red-handed cheating. Um, not with using a device. Again, saying, I don't think that he cheated, but Hans cheated over the board. But we're trying to get to the bottom of this. So now the correlation is 68.685. Let's run this on one of the Hans Sus games. So I'm going to pull in the Neiman games. And let's see if this 176 is still the one I was thinking about. Uh, um, Would someone say I analyze every classical game of Magnus Carlsen since January 2020 with the famous chess-based tool? 200% games and the other two other games above 90%. This is immense difference between Neiman and Magnus Carlsen. Neiman has 10 games with 100% and another 23 games above 90% in the same time. So this guy already did it to some extent, but he just used that database. He didn't use Python, so... Not as cool as us. I benchmarked it myself at work, though it'd be a fair data scale of terabytes. Yeah, trash can magic. If you're talking about terabytes, then yeah. What package am I using for Stockfish? Just this, just the Stockfish Python package, this one. Hey, welcome to the family, RAI369. Do you shop at REI? <laughs> I don't know, that's that's a bad joke. Yeah, so I'm just using this Stockfish um, Python package where you just point it at the Stockfish version you have. By default, by the way, did you know that f the pre-built binaries for um, Stockfish 
don't work on Ubuntu 2004. So it comes with by default with Stockfish 11. So I had to build it from scratch. Akka Ankush, welcome. Ankush 2658, or should I just call you 2658? Do you go by your last name, 2658? Guys, we're getting up there in the followers. We're at 2368. it up though will this have it iterated over all the mainline moves no i think this is okay num moves is in here and then in two qdm we're gonna do the total equals the number of moves so now our progress bar should work a little bit cleaner stockfish has crashed stockfish oh stockfish why do you crash so much, Stocky? All right, so 89 moves. Let's also go here. We're going here to the sus game. This is the sus game. Is this the one he... Engine game correlation, not enough moves. Interesting. So that says there's not enough moves in that game. Well, maybe that's because that's the first game. That's why this is a blank. Uh, you can... You can only call Ankush. Ankush? Do you have an ML data science series that 
is geared towards beginners. I have like a pandas. Crazy Fanatic Man is asking that in YouTube. I have it in pandas, a pandas introduction, and I have all my YouTube videos. You can check them out. Exclamation point YouTube. But there's so much out there on YouTube. His name is Newman. Written in C++, undefined behavior is just part of the experience. That means that most... That means most of the moves are in theory. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think I was clicking on the wrong game, maybe. Maybe that's my problem. But I'm trying to find the second game... Second round game, which I guess would be this game. This is the sus game, right? Hey, Saint Rain, or either Sane Train or Saint Rain. Welcome to the fam. You, you chose all capitals, which makes it hard for me to know which one to say. But I hope you all are having a good time tonight. I usually don't go past um, 11. Yeah, we're getting there. All right. Holy smokes, guys. Holy smokes. We did find this correlation is 9-9. Nine, nine. Rut row. Hansi, are you cheating, Hans? Uh-oh. I think my bug before. Uh-oh. Let's do this. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take all of his games from this tournament. And run it on that and see if we get. Is it a good move? Someone's asking career wise to switch from software developer to ML career. I think it's all about what you enjoy, but I think software engineers actually can make more money unless you're like a PhD in. Um... All right, so this one that has the 12%, remember this is the one that says the correlation couldn't be made because there's not enough moves. There's only 27 moves. Yeah, so it's all about what you enjoy working on. I have 100% accuracy, Ruben says. Yeah, this 9-9, this nine nine, at least we're getting... Yeah, so we figured out this bug. Thank you, whoever noticed it, where I didn't update the position when I was t making my evaluation. Yeah, this that was sus. But then we're going to do the same thing for Carlson's game and see what sort of accuracy he gets. I guess we could run it on... I mean, at this depth, if I only ran it at a depth of 15, it's actually a manageable amount of time that I could run it overnight on all of Carlson's games and probably all of Hans's games that I have. Let's let's do that math. 22 seconds. And by do that math, I mean, <laughs> just look and see what the internet tells me. 22 seconds times, let's say each of them have 2000 games, 12 hours. I can up the number of threads that I'm using too. So 2000 games would take me about 12 hours. Do ML and if, if you are okay with projects with undeterministic outcomes. Ah, that's a good point. Sometimes you can do to throw six months of work in the trash. That's very true. Is there a way you can do both software engineering and also ML? I mean, machine learning engineer is kind of the equivalent to that. I, I think some companies call it that.
Uh, Ruben in, in YouTube saying there are some openings in chess that are played to force a draw. If there are a few moves played, then players agree to a draw. Yeah. It's usually one of the computer lines, which will, well, yeah, Ruben actually, um, the day that the day that Carlson withdrew from this, the tournament do the Han stuff. Um, then like the next day everyone was kind of in a funk and they all like played those openings where they chose to draw against each other because no one felt like playing because they're all so weirded out by it as it is asking me which major should i study cybersecurity or software engineering it's all i mean that's like saying which food should i eat it's, you got to decide s some stuff for yourself, but definitely research as much as you can and then make your own decision as to what you find the most interesting, is what I would suggest. But I think people want to do model design. They look mostly for research scientist roles and those that are mostly PhDs and there's not many of those. Yeah, I my last job, or I guess two jobs ago, was a research scientist. And almost everyone I worked with had a PhD. I was the non-PhD guy. Why do you use Jupyter Notebooks? Because I'm bad at coding. Unbandit, that's why. Do you use them and why? I'm going to turn that around to, for you. Okay, so our correlation stuff here, something's, something's not right. Because it's saying this is 98. Which would be... Round number three of this Masters event, 0.98. So this is not the same... This says he's a 40. His engine correlation is 40. So what's going wrong here? What, where do we go from 98 to... Oh, so this one failed. So we can look at the one that didn't fail and do our plot of top moves. Last one that didn't fail. So it's saying it's not correlated because at the end of this game, he deviated a lot from the top moves. So let's do, um, this second game, which is 67. Mainline moves. So it's saying this is highly correlated. Do you also lose this game? Uh, let's go back to analysis here. So many chest things up. Load that. In this game, he is playing as black, and he lost. So is this the game he threw, but he still had a 98% correlation? Uh, personally, I dislike notebooks greatly, but it's horses for courses. I've been really interested in quantum computed and not been sure if the transition is viable from zero physics background. Whew, that seems like a big jump. But I'm sure if you really work towards it, you could get it. Sympathy uses Jupyter Notebooks. Yes, nice. Mo not most of the time though, right? When I see you coding most of the time, it's not in Jupyter Notebooks. So my, my philosophy is, because I spend a lot of my days like, Someone higher up is saying, hey, figure out like, why is this data look like this? Or, or what's the average amount of this and that? And make me some plots for this slide deck. 
and doing doing data wrangling in Jupyter Notebooks is just great. It's just like, there's nothing that can match it. But if I'm writing some code like this that I'm actually gonna run multiple times, ideally I'd abstract that out into a function or some other source code that I could then later on import into the notebook if I'm gonna use, or I just run this like, this script now runs on its own, but I basically prototype this all in Jupyter Notebooks. It's also, I think Jupyter Notebooks are more fun as a viewer of a live coder to watch. Cause I'm like running each cell and I get to, you get to see what happens as output. That's just my take. I mean, tell me I'm an idiot. If I did exploratory words where the statefulness was benefit, I'd probably like notebook, notebooks better. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So it's like, it's what you're coding, right? If you're writing tests, if you're like one of those coders who writes test cases first before you write the code, and like you know exactly in your brain what you're gonna do and you're trying to achieve some outcome, then most of the time I'm like starting to code, I'm like I have no idea where this is going. I don't know what like the, what's the um, distribution of this column in this data set? Oh, oh, it's this? Okay, then let's try this modeling technique or, or let's split on this column, you know? You don't know that until you're... Hey, Mozilla Firefox is now following? Mozilla! I am a big fan. Welcome to the family. I am I feel so embarrassed that I'm using Chrome right now. Oh, man. That's a little cringe. Mozilla, though. Like, we go ba way back to the 90s, you and I. Mozilla, I'm pretty sure that, like, we hung out before you were cool. So it's cool. Thanks for following. Sympathy says you get the same questions as I do. Oh yeah, like the the trying to do this. Check out this data. Uh, I let other people deal with the stakeholder tags. I just automate it for them. Yeah, if you can't have that buffer, that's like the perfect thing, right? Well, undergrad studying data science. How do I get as good as you at DS? Uh, stain train. I'm choosing to call you stain train instead of, oh, I guess it, it couldn't be Saint rain stain train. You just work hard and, and I'm not that good at it. There are a lot of people I work with that are much better at it than me. So shoot for hire like a Python repo. Uh, you can have the notebook in v VS code. I know, I know you can run. Jupyter Notebooks in VS Code. Nebster, welcome. Nebster, welcome to the family. I'm sorry, Nebster, you're not as big of a celebrity as Mozilla Firefox that just followed one minute ago. I'm gonna tell my wife about this and kids tomorrow. I'm gonna tell them all about Mozilla Firefox was watching the stream yesterday. It's crazy. Um. I'm really glad you're doing a Hans analysis. It's very interesting as both the chess player and a data science enthusiast. Yeah, I feel like that too, Extreme. I just joined, what's my conclusion? Don't have a conclusion yet. We're just trying to get things working. <laughs> yeah, Mozilla's huge honor. By the way, I'm way back in the in the uh, thread trying to catch up. I like this, There's a lot of chatting going on tonight. Started using VS Code recently. I won't go back to Jupyter Notebook. Yeah, I okay. So on the VS Code thing, Thiago Priz ninety two, Pierce Pierce ninety two. I'll just gonna call you ninety two. Welcome. Also, Rip Curl. Welcome. I tried using the VS Code Jupyter, but it doesn't work. It doesn't feel the same. I explained it when I was trying it. It was like playing like acoustic guitar when you're used to electric. Like it, it just didn't feel, I couldn't escape out. Like I am pretty quick and efficient in notebooks. Like I can jump around, can add a cell above here, um, enter, enter the cell really quickly without taking my hands off the keyboard. Uh, you know, delete things. It just wasn't working the same way when I tried it in um, 
in VS Code, I couldn't, I couldn't switch over. Do you, do you find yourself looking at Panda's documentation all the time because I can never remember? Yeah, you have to consciously, there are things that I've looked up the same Stack Overflow or the same Panda's documentation like a hundred times. And you have to just consciously tell yourself, I'm reading this for the hundredth time. I need to take five minutes or two minutes. Sometimes it's even one minute and just say, I'm gonna memorize this, because it's not that hard. Example, uh, pandas, whenever you're working with a data frame with a lot of columns, by default, it only shows like 20 columns, but oftentimes you don't wanna see these dots, you wanna see the full, all the columns. So I used to Google that over and over again, like how do you do that, and then I just like, Sat down one time, I'm like, I'm gonna remember this. I'm gonna make myself remember it. And PD set option, watch me get it wrong now. Set option. And now it's display with the new versions. Uh, max columns. And then you can set it to 500, right? So now I just know that. And the more and more you do that, the more and more time you save. And time is the most precious thing we all have. And unfortunately, mine is limited. So we're gonna be done with this stream very soon. This was one of the most fun streams I've ever experienced. So thank you all for being here. Can we get Fs in chat? Can you guys type F in chat if you had fun tonight? Nebster, thanks for the asking that question. F, oh, we got one F. I'm gonna throw an F out there. Thank you guys for having fun with me tonight. Let's switch over here. Um, I know we didn't get super far in this. Like we didn't solve all the world's problems. I need to, I need to understand why this code I know is wrong, but I need to run this, get this code cleaned up and run on a bunch of games. And then we can analyze these crazy positions that are not correlated. Why does it say this correlation is 0.99? And why does the other one say 40? That's the, that's where I am at now. It's like, we calculated this, it's 40 here. We calculate it here. And it says it's 98. So something's up. I've used the package teapot a long time ago. What do I think about it? I just, it was so long ago, I forget. F sharp, whoa, we got an F sharp. Let's do a raid. In Twitch land, we like to raid other people who hang out or who are streaming. And um, hopefully I don't get my YouTube taken down because there was a little bit of NFL football there for a second. Uh, but let's go into, not chess. Whoa, is there a second chess? What is this second chess category? Um, so we do, we have raided Sympathy a handful of times. I don't know if Sympathy's still around. She knows what it's like. There aren't many Python coders right now, but Strager, so we, we raided Chrissy yesterday and I feel like, or two days ago, I feel like back to back, we should take a break. And what do you guys think? Who should we raid? Chrissy or Strager? Strager sometimes doesn't feel like he's into me rating him. Do I have a dis... Oh, yeah, yeah. Let's talk about that stuff. So, um, exclamation point YouTube is my YouTube. Exclamation point uh, Discord. We'll give you my Discord. We also have a competition going on right now to win this GPU exclamation point competition. We'll get that for you. Um, I think these exclamation points mainly work only on Twitch, by the way. So hopefully you're over there on Twitch. You see this GPU? Hey, Raul T. Welcome to the family. See this GPU people. Do you see this? This GPU could be yours. That competition that's going on. You could win it. In it to win it. 
um, and the winner gets that GPU. So, um, this is my first time watching YouTube Medallion. Nice, Pi. I need to figure out how to get the chat to show both. Um, here's a weird thing. Like, I love my, my Twitch family, but how am I getting, like, so many more people viewing on YouTube? That's pretty cool. Ace Destiny, welcome to the family. By the way, also, if you're not watching on Twitch, here's the link. Make sure you watch there. You follow. I think it's against my terms that I'm doing <laughs> YouTube also, but... Uh, what competition? This is the competition. It ends in four days, though. So you're not, you don't have much time to get into it. We just had another team join. So we have 81 teams. We have a cheater here at the top, which we will remove. But everyone else is trying to classify corn. It's corn. Big lumps of knots. Moss layer. Most layer. Welcome to the family. So thanks, everyone, for hanging out tonight. Make sure you join this competition if you can, if you still have time. It helps me out if you um, click this link for NVIDIA's GTC too, because that's how you win. Who else joined here? Sky Razor, welcome to the family. All right, I think we're gonna end it there. Um, so we have a Discord, YouTube, Twitch. You can follow me on Twitter, I don't know. What's my name on Twitter? Rob underscore Mola. I sometimes tweet things. Not that great. I'll tweet every time I release a new YouTube video, which I released this one the other day, which is, um, yeah, I do have GitHub. I think you do ex exclamation point GitHub for that. Or you could just Google me. Not many people have my name. Yeah, Google, Google my name. That's me. Snacks, hee hee hee. Welcome to the fam. All right, no one has given a, given me a recommendation for who to raid. This guy's a NASA engineer. Maybe this would be cool to raid. Oh, he's just playing video games though. It's not coding. Um. All right, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna say we raid Strager. Is he coding Python? Ah, I keep on going back and forth. But Chrissy is doing by Python, so let's give her let's give her a shout out. All right, here we go. Rating in T minus. T minus. I don't know. Put this over here. Uh, if you're around, still in the stream, make sure you bring all that energy over to Chrissy's stream and I will see you all next time. Thanks again for hanging out. Love you all. It was fun. We learned a little bit about chess and Python and talked and had fun. And um, I don't think we can accuse anyone of cheating in chess because we don't have all the information. So I'll see you all around next time, maybe Sunday. Hey, the competition is ending soon. We'll be able to talk about that. So we'll see some of the top solutions. Let's have fun. Be nice to each other, love each other, and uh, see you all soon. And...